So we want to get going pretty quickly here because we're, we're running late and we don't want to shortchange you with these fabulous gentlemen. So I'm going to very quickly tell you who I am in case you're going, what? My name is Kirsten. I am from the website theonering.net. <laughs> awesome. If you don't know theonering.net, please check it out. We are incredibly fabulous and we love you all. That's all you need to know from me. Please welcome to the stage our actors from Middle Earth, dwarves and such. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Woo! There's a lot of you. Yeah. Look at you all. How are you doing, guys? No, look, really good. Look, so there's some VIP seats and they haven't turned up. Yeah. Oh, how I hate that. What? Someone grab it. Quick. I hope they turn up late. How come, <laughs> how, how come there's so many of you here but you haven't come to my autograph session? Neither mine. <laughs> <laughs> or, or to buy t-shirts from the OneRing.net either, for that matter. Yeah. Good on you. Love you very awesome. much. <laughs> Go on. So, so, guys, um, how does it feel to be coming into the home stretch of this epic journey with the third film coming out? <laughs> It's actually a little sad. I've done three years in, in Lord of the Rings and then three years on this, and it's um, hard to believe that I'm going to have to find an actual job. <laughs> yeah, I, I think probably the hardest thing is that um, we're not going to, um, you know, have the fan base that we'll have once the third movie's here because something else will come out, and thanks very much. No, oh, never, don't never. Be like that, Mark. I don't even know if it is the end of the film. I mean, as far as I know, we could be doing another one next year, so <laughs> who knows? <laughs> So what I would really like to know, <laughs> the uh, extended edition for Desolation of Smaug, we've heard that there is going to be 25 minutes of footage in this extended edition. Um, what are you guys hoping might have made it into that extended cut? Me, oh. just more me. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, there's <laughs> I think um, that's everybody's idea, isn't it? Yeah, the love um, scenes or the love scenes, I hope yeah. they're in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the dwarven love scenes. There's 21 minutes of Dean, and then there's four minutes of us doing our hair. Yeah. And, that's, and that's all. And then there's uh, 28 minutes of Smaug dealing to each of the dwarves. It's fantastic. And, and Dean, who are your love scenes with? I, I can't say. I can't say, yeah. <laughs> I, I can say. Thorin. Martin, yeah. It's me and Bilbo. <laughs> yeah. Because we're sort of similar height, you know, I know, it's just something, it's something felt right. Peter came up to us and like, I just think, you know, you guys together, there'll be something in it. Yeah, it's but Because, um, you know, there's Adrian, uh, Tariel and Killy, and then they're like, well, Bilbo and Philly's the obvious next choice. It was um, um, yeah. Bilbo's unexpected journey. <laughs> <laughs> there and, back, and again. back again. Yeah. <laughs> it could go on. Yeah. So, um... Sadwin, I want to ask you a question because you're somebody, for, like for many of us out here and many of us who've also introduced Tolkien and the movies to younger siblings or to kids, or, you've been, these movies have been a part of your life forever. Yeah. How forever. does that feel to have kind of just grown up with Middle Earth? Um, doesn't feel like I've left, <laughs> to be honest. Um... Yeah, well, go, being, <laughs> being five and doing something like that is absolutely amazing. So, um, Dad tells the story of he'd come home every day after work and I'd have every single one of my mates around and we'd be watching the extended edition for like the 15,000th time, so... Um, Wait, were, you, were you pausing at your moment? No, yeah, that's me. I hated Pause. my moment. <laughs> You all know at the time <coughs> which character Sadwin plays, right? <laughs> awesome. Just checking. Um, but no, it's it's uh, it's great to you know come back to those things when Dad got on the Hobbit and um, meeting all these lovely people. Um, it kind of was just like walking back into home. So yeah, and I think like we'll be part of Middle Earth forever and from now on as well, rather than just up until now. So. Yeah, and it's, it's awesome to see all of you guys as well. It's not just all about us, so. <laughs> what, what I think is quite extraordinary is just how much you looked like Aragorn. So, you know, Jed, Viggo Mortensen, he, uh, he, he wasn't in New Zealand, uh, you know. What does that say? <laughs> yeah, but he might have been. 
Uh, there was actually um, quite a lot of blogging after the Lord of the Rings came out. People going, no, I definitely know. He's definitely uh, Vigo's son. <laughs> and I had to quickly veto get going, I, I'm pretty sure he's not. I rang, <laughs> I rang Vigo and we had a very long conversation. <laughs> and he assures me that there's no way that it was possible. All right, uh, we... Well, sorry. No, it was a wig, so it's none of this. But, uh, what about I, the cheekbones, though? You can't fake those. No. <laughs> But my, my cheeks were a lot tubbier back then. Um, but no, and I told Dad after, after shooting that I was going to go live in LA with Vigo. And um, Vigo kind of said, uh, hey man, I got kids of my own to look after. <laughs> and so. Oh, I was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we should open up to you guys. What, have we got mics out here for people to ask questions from the floor, or are you just going to shout? Just awesome. shout. Shout. All right, but before we that start, be dangerous, no though. asking for hugs. Yeah. That is the banned question today. Oh. Just <laughs> shout. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hug Mark, and that'll have to do for all of you. Hey. He is my brother. All right, I saw somebody waving up here in the grey top. Shout. Yeah, what about them? They're fresh. <laughs> you guys are so easy. W would you like a cup of chamomile, Mr. Gandalf? <laughs> it's got a fruity bouquet. Bilbo, I never thought this was going to happen. <laughs> Good question. Who's next? There, over there. Shout it out. Yo, yo, yep. Over here. Go. Yeah. What was your most, embar or your most embarrassing moment on set? Uh, I was doing a fight scene with Vigo on the WAG, and I was kicking him in the face like this, and I had a leather G string on. <laughs> and uh, the cameraman just went, oh. <laughs> and he never told me what he saw, <laughs> but he never came back to work. <laughs> My most embarrassing moment was um, in the last few days of, of pickups. Um, my beard was killing me with um, itching. I couldn't bear it any longer. I had two years of it, and I wanted to actually set fire to it with it on my face. <laughs> and uh, there was a raging storm uh, happening in Wellington at the time outside the studio. I wasn't required for the shot, so I went outside to let the wind blow through my beard so it could stop scratching. And um, I sat down outside the studio in a raging torrent, uh, storm and fell asleep outside <laughs> on the ground. And apparently Peter Jackson came out, walked past me, had a quick look, then came back with his camera, <laughs> took a photograph of it and said, there are people waiting to gain employment on the film outside. <laughs> Embarrassment. Uh, I, I, I think I've said this before to some people, um, m a really embarrassing moment for me was at the end of the, was the rap party and I wanted to go up to Peter to say, you know, thanks, it's been an amazing experience and, um, you know, we both probably had a couple of beers and, and I, can I borrow you, can you be yeah, Peter? Sure. And so I, um, I was like, hey Peter, oh, look, hey man, um, you know, wanted to say blah 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 and I went to shake his hand and he went for the hug and I went, oh well I'll go for the hug then and then we, I don't know how it happened, but we ended up like this. <laughs> And it was just, and none of us mentioned it. <laughs> none of us mentioned it. And I saw him later that year at the premiere, and we were like, oh, and we went both for the handshake. <laughs> and there was like a sigh of relief. We're like, oh, thank God. I told my one at, uh, uh, at Unexposed, uh, face planting in the forest. Yeah. You planted your face. <laughs> Did yeah. it grow? There's little uh, Sadwin trees oh. everywhere. Sa yeah. Sad they look like Vigo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they grow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, next question. <coughs> right there. Uh, Boom. So 
one of the disadvantages or maybe advantages of working in 3D is everything in the background of shot has to be real. You can't just have people kind of gliding through the back out of focus. So it meant that when we were in a scene where we weren't the focus, we still had to have a little story going that made sense of the scene. Um, it kind of gave us something to do. So every time we walked on set for a scene, we had to kind of look at where we were and find something to do that actually made sense of the dwarves being in that space. I, I think probably from the three, uh, you know, the um, CGI perspective was actually inventing imaginary characters, um, goblins and other stuff that you had to fight, and then recreating that every single time on the eight or nine times uh, that we would do the take, and it became quite interesting trying to fight, imagining what things would look like and fighting them, and then that way, and then one, and you'd forget one that there was going to be a real one come in, and you get such a shock when there's a real stuntman there thinking, oh shit, you know. Uh, <laughs> That, that, that's probably, you know, getting you... Ah! No. <laughs> that's not an exaggeration. We were in the barrels and we were floating around and I was, you know, I was being so heroic killing fake orcs and I turned around and a real one popped out of the water in front of me and I went... Ah! <laughs> and the camera came past and I'm sure they're in the tent going, don't use that bit. Don't that was... That one's in the extended version quite a lot. They just, it's like on a rolling reset. Ah, yeah. ah, ah, ah. It's, it's so funny when you're, when you're doing anything on a CGI and even with the guys because you also, when you get the giggles, it's terrible when you get the giggles. When something funny happens and you know that you're going around or you're going to do something and the camera's going to be there. And I, Jed and I were terrible at looking at each other and, and laughing. He'd do that. He'd just do that. I'm, and I'm gone. Or Dean would do his wink, which is terrible. Which is... Yeah. <laughs> and then you'd come round and you'd suddenly the camera's... <laughs> And uh, you're stuffed, yeah. And and then Peter goes, uh, Mark, I prefer if you acted. Uh, it's not supposed to be a funny moment. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Wait, did you say hyperactive or attractive? <laughs> I think hyperactive would go to Jed. Um, yeah, it's really difficult. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, people don't, people don't think about that part of it, but you know, you wake up in the morning and think, man, I've got so much to sort of live up to when you look in the mirror. No, I don't, no, I don't even think about it. I think it's all a question of relativity, you know? I mean, like, you know, me and Aiden were lucky not to get too many prosthetics because we were younger dwarves, um, so we kind of dodged a bullet, really. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have no idea how insensitive that question is? <laughs> He, he, oh, no, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. You don't want to go there, man. It's not a pretty thing. Those questions are so hard to answer because no matter what you say, you always feel like it's a bit of a douchebag, you know what I mean? And, and, and the, the... Thanks, man. There Mark's goes the theory. waiting for you after the Q&A. We've got to fly home with this dude. Go. Okay, here's a story, okay? And look, before anyone says anything, I'm actually in the Navy. It is a real sailor suit. Frickin' sailor suit. I'm a Lieutenant Commander in the Royal New Zealand Navy, all right? I have another job. I'm in at work, okay? I'm in at work at Defence Headquarters in Aitken Street in Wellington, um, actually having a meeting with the Rear Admiral, who is the Chief of Navy, the Deputy Chief of Navy, and Operations, who is, the, who is a captain. Next minute, there's a knock on the door, and the Secretary says, um, I'm sorry to interrupt, Admiral, but um, there's a car here to pick up uh, Lieutenant Commander Hadlow to take him to Stone Street. I'm talking about the Chief of Navy, okay? <laughs> this is the Chief of Navy. So I'm summoned. I'm in my uniform, and I get summoned to go to Stone Street. No time to change go straight to Stone Street, get taken in to do the backstage story. So I'm sat down, I had no choice, I had to do in my uniform. So ever since, I've had ridicule, and I... 
Yeah, it's great. It's like I, I, Top Gun. But it's, it's for real, honestly. That is how that happened. And um, the Navy love it because I got on screen in, in my uniform and they all think I'm a, you know, an actor who works, who doesn't really belong in the Navy. <laughs> but the Admiralty said, hello, you look good in your uniform. Yeah. <laughs> and um, any chance of a swing around the floor? F fuck off. And, um, and uh, no, 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 I have to be very careful because when I'm in my uniform, I have to be, you know, I have to be uh, a, a, naval, a naval officer. Simple as that. But good question. Thank you. But, but Mark, we love a man in uniform. Well, then why didn't you kiss me out there? <laughs> Thank you. It's actually, uh, to be honest, I'm very proud to be in the Navy. And uh, on Friday, of course, it was uh, our Anzac Day. And um, so um, where we landed in Gallipoli with uh, the New Zealand and the Australian forces. So, um, and a year ago, I sang the national anthem, um, God Defend New Zealand, at Gallipoli in Turkey. And it would be the most proudest day of my life. Seriously. Thank you. Well, that deadened everything, didn't it? Hi. It's not his fault. Yeah. Nor ours. Um, yes, I do remember that answer because I, I, I do have problems sometimes with questions on the spot like, you know, like what was your favourite, what was the most embarrassing, da, da, da. so sometimes I make up things to stall, um, like, ah, oh, yeah, oh yeah, oh, I was in the second scene, second movie, I can't talk about it. But actually, though, that scene was one of my more favourite ones, um, uh, and, and this sounds like I'm getting postponing, but there is another scene, I think that's going to be in the third movie, which I really enjoyed, which continues a similar theme. But the second one, the second movie... <laughs> Uh, yes, I did really enjoy that scene, um, and it was good to do sort of, you know, like have a dialogue with Richard. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just getting to this little hole here. Yeah. Um, Are you digging no, on I a really shovel? Liked it. Um, but I was, you know, I was, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little nerve-wracking, because, I mean, the guys will testify that, you know, we're on set for two and a half years, but sometimes, literally, a month would go by, and we would just be doing fighting or battle sequences, and then one day you turn up, and all of a sudden you're actually, like, acting, having to act. So sometimes it was like day one all over again. Um, but it was really good, and I, I feel for my character that scene was a really defining moment um, because, uh, like, Philly is, he's, you know, he really looks up to his uncle um, and he wants to go on this adventure and be, you know, and reclaim the homeland. But, but really, his, his loyalty is to his brother because at the end of the day, he has to look after him, um, especially since he's been wounded. And so it comes down to, you know, the greater good or, or your family, and he chooses family. So it is an important moment for him, yeah. So, second part? Oh, oh my God. Whoa. Wait, whoa. Was there more? Jeez. Can't, I, can't really, I can't actually even really begin to answer that, to be honest. Um, yeah, sorry. I, it's just because I don't know what they're going to use in the cuts. So it's hard to say. Misleading. But it's, it's a good question. But I, unfortunately, I can't answer it until next year. <laughs> Loud. Loud. The two swords. I love the two swords. Oh, I love them. M my bolos. I love my bolos. Sorry, your what? My bolos. That's, that, that's, sorry, that's not no, a weapon, Mark. I know it is. <laughs> because the beauty is they're detachable. Ah! <laughs> I, think, I think I'd like to have a wag. I think a wag's a pretty good weapon. Yeah. I had a wag and it was pretty hard to kill. I'd like to have seen yeah. that. Well, about you, Sadie? Mark's Bolos. Yeah, Mark's Bolos. Um, <laughs> I, no, I didn't have a weapon. Um, actually, so that would be called something else, and let's not go there. Yeah. Um, Deleted scenes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I reckon all the all the weapons in um, Middle Earth are pretty. pretty That's not true. Back. You saw that yeah. ham. You saw that ladle that Stephen Hunter had to carry around. Yeah, yeah. the ladle. Stephen what? Hunter's weapon for a while was a ladle. ladle. Yeah. Hey, but oh. it was the same thing with Sam, right? Yeah, what did he have? He had like a big frying pan. Yeah, lame. Yeah, lame. Yeah, yeah. See, it was an old gag. He did be oh. cool with it, but... You know. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah well, but but yeah. hobbits can kill people with one stone. Apparently. Hobbits may be able to. Yes, know, what about so dwarves? So uh, who knows? Flatulence. But, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this question up here. Yep. Louder, darling, please. Troll every time. Uh, oh, I think I think a dwarf. I think if I was any creature in Middle Earth, which I was, I think I'd be a dwarf. It's good. I, I really like my character, so I, I think I have to put my hand up for a dwarf as well. Yeah. Um, so like, oh, uh, sad one. Oh. <laughs> Go, sad. Um, uh, no, Future King Gondor is yeah. Oh. I freaking loved it. Yeah. <laughs> we went to New York and there was a billboard with our faces, our dwarvy faces on it, and the building, it was on the side of a building, and the building was a, a gigantic. It was gi painted. Yeah. It was painted. It was massive. Yeah. Our was faces were like three stories tall. But what was really weird is like in London, I'm, I remember standing at uh, like Piccadilly Circus or something, and there were buses, four buses in a row went past, and our faces were on them. And I was like, oh my God. Literally no one knows. Rah. It was getting to the point where I was like, yeah. And they're like, no, so uh, no, stop doing that, please. It yeah. was great. It was no great for the um, when we when we went into Times Square too, because they had the the big billboard right in the middle of Times Square. Yeah. That was amazing. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Because we like it, eh? But no one really recognises us that yeah, much. That was so of, funny. Like, these things. That happened on the red carpet actually, because when I arrived to do the premiere in London, I get out of the car um, with my son who was accompanying me. And this guy yelled, "Hey, hey, over here. yeah, Ray, come over here, yeah, yeah, want you?" And I walked over towards him, and he said, "Oh." No, I, uh, you're not, no, <laughs> late, oh. <laughs> and, then of course, and then of course Dean got out of the car and they went, yes, no, you, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Jed got out of the car and. Ah. But the, the Lego was the coolest thing because I love yeah. Lego. I think that's you've the made it thing. if you get Lego. Yeah, right. In the yellow. God, uh, how many guys Nothing. knives? <laughs> how many guys did I have? What? Um, yeah, how many knives? Uh, okay, well, if you include, can you include the little axes? Let's include them. Um, the little shaving axes, because I didn't really use them in the movie, so I figured they were for like just trimming the beard. Um, so two axes, two axes, a knife, a knife, two swords, uh, one. I think a uh, twelve, twelve to fourteen. Yeah, I didn't carry them all with me, obviously, but when, you know, when we shot that scene, I was like, oh, I'm way more weaponed up than I thought, yeah. <laughs> oh, one of my hair, too. Was that in the film? Came out the back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's the one in there, too. Because the gentleman all the way at the back has had his hand up for ages. Yes, yes. Oh, you, bless sir. You. Yes. He just can't put his hand down, that's all. Tenakutu, Tenakutu, Tenakutu Katu. We we didn't really get to work with him. He was on the mocap stage pretty much on his own just with Peter and Philippa. So we got to meet him, but we didn't really get to work with him, unfortunately, for him. Um <laughs> I know that he was very he was very sad about that, and he, he's really struggled not being there with the dwarves. But um, he made a pretty good fist of it, I thought. So the gentleman in the white t-shirt, chap, in the white t-shirt here. I forgot I had a mic for a minute there. Greetings. It's great, actually, when you play someone who is a long way away from you, because obviously I'm a really nice and good-looking guy. <laughs> so to play someone who's really heinous and ugly was really great. <laughs> and um, as Simon can tell you, I'm not like that at all at home. So I think the further away a character is from you, son, son. There's still the inheritance to talk about, boy. Um, um, 
the further away you have to go to play a character, the kind of easier it is because you can, you can really go there. The, the closer a character is to you, the harder it is in some ways because it's harder to make those clear distinctions. So I really, really like playing evil characters in the films, not in real life. Yeah, right. Uh, I enjoyed playing Bert uh, because really um, there was no prosthetics or anything else required. Um, so I was <laughs> cast as is, where is. Um, to be honest, we did all of the troll stuff on the mocap stage. We had no idea what our troll was going to look like. We had a few drawings, but when I saw the movie and saw actually what Pete had done uh, uh, with the trolls was absolutely boom, gobsmacking. Because the trolls are fabulous. Oh, I like a bit of farmer. Ooh, shut up. <laughs> it was fantastic, all that sort of stuff, which was great. But the trolls were great fun. We had three or four days just on the set with, um, with Pete just being directed and just doing our thing and working and walking like a troll. We found all these ways to walk. And, you know, and um, one of the great moments for me is when Peter decided to put self-abuse in the film with Dory and his bolos hitting Bert in the balls. <laughs> and he left children, it in the film. Children, with children. What? From you. Um, and um, which is, we've been talking about me using bolos anyway. Um, and uh, so Dory hits Bert right a smacker in the home front. And um, so it was great. self abuse Pete loved that. Okay, we've got time for one more question. This lady in a grey shirt that has had a hand up for ages, so. Hi, I think you're all attractive. Love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Uh, oh Last sure. question. <laughs> we'll, we'll, just do, we'll just do the first verse. All right. I might be a bit pitchy. Yeah, it might be a little bit okay. pitchy. I'll start it again. Here we go. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. We'll see how it goes. <coughs> no. Wait, which version did you want? The misty mountains cold To dungeons deep And caverns old We must away Ere break of day To find a long Forgotten gold <laughs> We were in from the heights, and we were going. Thank you. Thank you. Well, gents. I know, uh, I know you guys said it was kind of sad that it was coming to an end because, you know, the fandom would come to an end, but that's not going to happen. And so uh, are we going to see you back at more conventions, we hope, in the future? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll be back. Yeah. Yes. Because it is about all of you. That's why we're here. Thank you all you so much. Seriously. Here. Wonderful. Thank you. S fabulous. Love Calgary! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs>